but with a diversity of content worth attracting attention in the promotion of good governance. But also that elevates her office and dignity as a person. So, to us in the country, we are very privileged to host uh, her when she came. The Commonwealth system prevails in the Parliament of Uganda despite being slightly different from the House of Commons. Our source of training materials and induction to members of Parliament is usually the House of Commons or related legislatures which have a similar system from which we could benchmark. Dr. Chris Bariomosi says Uganda needs to promote its own independent homegrown good governance practices and avoid being slaves to the colonial system. We should be able to pick lessons, practices over this period and uh, even if it means dismantling the commonwealth and the colonial legacy systems, we should and have our own way of looking at things. Bayomunsi asserts that despite the achievements obtained through foreign policies, Uganda is mature enough to drive its own system. We should not continue being slaves of the Commonwealth system. We have matured enough as countries which were colonized, and therefore we should also be able to examine some of these systems which were left and where they are not appropriate or they are not practical. Queen Elizabeth's 70-year accomplished leadership of the United Kingdom is also a food for thought for cultural leaders in Africa. Has managed to balance between the two and succeed as a nation. It is something that we can look at and find out whether there are any things that we can learn from in order to be replicated. Although unlike Uganda, we don't have one superior or singular traditional institution that encompasses the entire country. The late Queen Elizabeth first had a stopover at Entebbe International Airport in 1952 and then returned shortly after 1954 for the inauguration of the Owen Falls Dam and most recently in 2007 for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting that was held in Kampala. Daniel Mugoya, Dan Rugemwa, UBC News. Bukedi district residents have held a protest march against those suspected to be nursing evil to harm the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Anet Amwong. Now residents of Kualir, Kamutur and Aminit have held a peaceful march demanding for increased protection of their Member of Parliament, also a daughter of the area. Bukedaya district residents are demanding for tight security to protect their member of parliament, who is also the woman member of parliament, Anita Anit Among. Save Anita! Save Anita! A demonstration has been held across three sub counties of Kolir, Kamutur, and Aminit in Bukedaya district with the placards written on Preserve the Speaker, Preserve Parliament, Security Where Are You? We Shall Die for Anita. Government protect Anita or else Arab boys take over. You take speaker's life, you rather take our lives as well. Let us begin with us from this place and then later on take, uh, take on our life. We will never sit down and watch her life go down the drains when we are just in this place. The motto of Uganda says that for God and my country. And I'm requesting her to have that heart. Anything concerning Satan, she should reject. reject. Let the parliament protect our daughter. Twagala kusaba gwanga. Twagala kusaba mu seven. Twagala kusaba parliament. Obanga anita fuse songa. Mumukomye mu muleke. Lokuba sifa ba mu entebe yokubera speaker. Sick. Nga NRM bebakiza ne bagamba anita kabere en speaker we gwanga. With the chance of save anita. Demonstrators marched from Merio Parish to Kolir Sub County headquarters in a spirit of expressing displeasure over speakers' assassination threats. Anita is a mother. I mean, Anita is the one who is bringing unity here. Anita is not segregating people. Our country is at stake, the parliament is at stake, Bukede is at stake, 
Cholera is at stake and we can't even eat or sleep from the time we got that information. So far now we have lost a lot of people in Uganda over those things now. That's why we are requesting now internal security to provide us with enough security for our daughter. Please Uganda, help us for our daughter. Save Anita. Save Anita. This comes a few days after the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Anit Among said there were attempts against her life. Save Anita. Bara City is benefiting from a new set of urban roads worth 18.9 billion Uganda shillings, whose construction work has been launched by the Minister of State for Urban Development, Obiga Kania. Funded by the World Bank, the new transport infrastructure includes Ch Chamugorani, Municipal Access Road, Lower Circular, Mosque Road and Rugara Road. Minister of State for Urban Development, Obiga Kanya, has launched the third phase of the construction of roads measuring 10.5 kilometers in Barara City. And when we have completed these projects, Barara will be a shining city. Thank you. The five major roads that are expected to boost economic and social development in the new city are expected to cost close to 19 billion shillings. In this task, I call upon the local leaders to help us. Beginning with you, the Lord Mayor, I'm happy. Keep visiting these projects to make sure that they deliver. These contractors, don't leave them alone. The councillors, the elected leaders, this is a free gift for you to win the next elections. The minister encouraged strong partnerships between domestic and foreign construction firms, saying it would enhance transfer of expertise, skills and contract performance. But for us in Usmin, we define Bubu like this. We define Bubu to, be, to do that one which is local and which can deliver. You don't win a contract because you are local. You should win a contract because of your track record. The mayor, Mbarara City, Robert Kachevezi, disclosed that the five roads and two beautification projects are located in the city's north and south divisions. He also promised to ensure close monitoring of the projects. What I want is uh, one, quality work. Quality work. But I have trust in you because you worked in some of the roads. And we did not have any issues. I know you will work. But that was, you know, this is a, a big thing. You must show your expertise. The third phase of road construction in Barara City comes on the hills of the second phase in which numerous challenges emerged, slowing project works for behind schedule by over six months. These are under phase two, which are still under construction and include the rehabilitation of Major Victor Buana Road, Galt Road, and Stanley, totaling to 2.36 kilometers. Uh, Victor Buana Road is at 68%. Uh, Stanley Road at 47%. And Galt Road at 39%. So that is the physical performance as far as uh, those roads are concerned. Vicent Wamundu, Sudat Kaye, UBC News. Ntungamo municipality may encounter problems in getting back 7.5 billion Uganda shillings swiped back to the National Treasury meant for road infrastructure projects owing to slow absorption out of 12.5 billion shillings in signed out contracts for two municipality roads over Kanjinya and Tindibakira measuring 1.37 and 0.7 kilometers respectively only 30 percent has been completed this is in spite of the project time frame remaining being eight months according to the Uganda support to municipal infrastructure program we have more in this report Ntungamo is part of the municipal council across the country that is implementing the 360 million US dollars infrastructure initiatives funded by the World Bank, whose team is conducting an on-spot assessment of implementation across the country. But out of 12.5 billion shillings allocated for the young municipality, 
only 5 billion shillings has been absorbed, with 7.5 billion swept back to the National Treasury because of slow implementation of the road civil works. The Ntungamo Resident District Commissioner Godfrey Mochunguzi now says there will be a thorough audit of the municipal council done in order to ascertain the challenges. We cannot simply get used to doing wrong in the names of saying you see for us, you see for what, what is that? If there is a, some mud somewhere that makes some workers stuck, be sure I am going to jump it. And I will save the situation, that one I must promise. Dr. Isaac Motenyo urged the municipal authorities to resolve the implementation challenge. We've assessed work compared to the last time we were here around July, and we have seen some improvement, but still there's a lot to be done. Uh, on the roads, we have seen cases where there seem to be a few encumbrances on the road, which we have advised the municipal council to take up urgently. The mayor and Tongamo municipality, Jacob Kafureka, said in the third phase, a new modern market will be constructed in Tongamo as a complete measure of ensuring both residents and business operations run smoothly. We hope that with our continued cooperation, we shall achieve more. This contract needs intensive care. <laughs> intensive care. To the extent that any slight omission, then the patient dies. The USMID program technical committee includes engineers, planners, environmental and social experts, among others who are currently assessing the progress of the ongoing works. Vicent Wamundo compiled this report. District officials across the country have reportedly shunned radio talk shows over lack of confidence to sensitize the public on various government projects. Now, this has left the majority of the population not well informed about some of the government projects, despite the free radio airspace availed for the government officials to sensitize the masses. 96.9 Mbale, 95.7 Jinja. All radio stations across the country are mandated to avail airspaces for the district's government officials to sensitize the public on various government projects. Today they are giving us space in the radios. And I believe and hope strongly that we will have time to go to those radio stations and utilize the time, that space that is being provided to us. Let us use it. Let's maximize that opportunity. However, these airspaces have not served the intended purpose after the majority of the district officials reportedly shunned the radio talk shows over lack of confidence to sensitize the public. Uh, uh, why are you calling? Uh, me, I cannot go there. What will I say? Please, you have a lot to say. You're a technical person. You have everything to say. This is the opportunity we have. Go and say it. Some of the district's officials owned the blame and attributed it to the communication gap between the service providers and the public. Uh, yes, the airtime is there. Uh, we are not utilizing it. Uh, true. Uh, this could be because there is a communication gap between the extension workers and maybe the farmers uh, that we are supposed to, to help. This has affected agricultural sector since the country is grappling with a limited number of extension workers. We need to have uniform messages to give to this farmer. How best can we do that? We can only do it by coordinating our movements. We can only do that by holding our hands and working together. This prompted Farm Radio International to intervene by engaging the district technical teams to enable more than 1.5 million farmers have access to radio programs. And our main purpose is to enable these different districts come up with a, a, a platform that will be a hub comprising of different uh, knowledge partners including radio stations that will be responsible for uh, crafting messages 
that are pertinent to the farmers at the local level and these messages must be tallied with the crop calendar if they identify the crop. In that when it goes uh, through the radio, the farmers at the grassroots receive that information in timely and they can be able to move with the crop calendar. A two-year project is currently being piloted in the 20 districts and it is expected to be rolled out to the rest of the districts in the country. Joseph Oko, UBC. Now the performance monitoring of Mioga Sakos in Bugweri district show the presidential initiative is registering gradual social economic transformation. Bugweri district located in Busoga sub region received a seed capital of 560 million Uganda shillings by the microfinance support center. While speaking to the beneficiaries of the Mioga program in Bujiri district, State Minister for Microfinance, Haruna Cheyune Kasolo, urged SACO members to have financial discipline and save the biggest part of their income. After handing over a motorcycle to a SACO leader in Iganga, Minister highlighted the performance of the entire sub-region and urged people to respect government programs for poverty eradication. Let's all have the income generating activities. If you do not have capital to start that activity, go to your Mioga, get some funding, start a business, however little it may be, however small it may be, please start. It is always big to start, I mean to think big, you start small, but you start now, you start immediately. According to the district and circle leaders, the presidential initiative Emioga has helped to improve standards of living of many households. However, they ask that members should recover the loans for others to benefit. We have the fault and sack. We need the office of the RIC and the community members, these are the community leaders, to help us to demand this money from these otherwise people who are taking it for granted, especially the NRM claims. Because a number of them they are saying it was a hardship. Others Say it was a of appreciation. There is a group I visited is for disabled women and men. I went there before I went there before they got man of the nature of this nature. Their group was really moving in a dwindling kind of situation. But immediately they got this money. There is a very great change registered economically. Bujiri district has three constituencies and all of them benefited from the program. Bujiri municipality received seed capital of 560 million shillings. Loans disbursed at 454,755,000 shillings. Recovered 358,888,100 shillings and savings of 89 million 958,261 shillings with share capital of 12 million 800,000 shillings. Bukoli North got seed capital of 560 million shillings. Loans disbursed at 865 million 235,900 shillings. Recovered 358 million 888,100 shillings with savings at 53,269,305 shillings and share capital at 26,700,000 shillings. Bukoli County constituency got seed capital of 560 million shillings with loans disbursed at 1,021,038,000 shillings, recovered 534,671,600 shillings with savings of 75 million 53,304 shillings and share capital of 28,500,000 shillings. Wadulo Makanold Kagoro Joshua, Bujiri District, for UBC News. 
Toro Kingdom has received the support of 30 million Uganda shillings to support the coronation ceremonies of Omukama of Toro or Yonimba Kabambai Guru Rukidi IV, slated for the 12th of September. The financial support is based on the long-standing collaboration between the two entities that has impacted positively on the local community of Toro. Toro Kingdom is in the final stages of preparations for the 27th anniversary in Pango, slated on the 12th of September 2022. The kingdom on the same occasion will celebrate 200th anniversary of existence. And uh, it is coinciding with the, the 200th journey since the kingdom of Toro uh, was cut off from Bunyoro, the great kingdom. On record that uh, in the 200 years, Toro Kingdom have got so far, this is the 13th king. Through leveraging on the heritage and historical sites in the kingdom, Cultural Minister Peter Rusoke says they will use the function to propagate social economic transformation. So we are looking at how culture can assist our this generation in a hundred years have achieved ABCD. That is the infrastructure and the, of course agriculture, the science and technology which is at a rapid speed whereby we need also to equip our the king's subjects to match with the, the current situation. The kingdom is a predominant source of sorghum and cassava which are the main raw materials for Uganda breweries and it's on this backdrop that Uganda Breweries Limited has supported coronation activities with 30 million shillings. It is a very significant part of the tradition of the celebration and therefore we have made a, you know, a modest contribution of 30 million shillings uh, towards uh, these events so that the people of Toro can celebrate, especially on the Kasiki Day, they can celebrate with our products. The partnership of these two entities has over the years boosted agricultural produce through encouraging the adoption of modern technology and proper farming practices. So we are encouraging uh, because of our concern about the environment and um, you have all heard about uh, uh, environmental, social governance, carbon emissions and so on. We are also encouraging what we are calling green agriculture. The Omukam of Toro, Oyo Nyimba Kabamba Iguru Rukidi IV, was enthroned on the 11th of June 1994 at three years of age. Marion Awori, UBC News. UBC News State Minister for Higher Education Dr. John Chrysostom Muyingo has cautioned institutions in the country against introducing new programs for students when they don't have enough staff, facility among others. The minister was officiating at the third graduation ceremony of School of Hygiene in Bale where 420 graduated. State Minister for Higher Education, Dr. John Chrysostom Muyingo, has cautioned institutions of higher learning against introducing new programs when they don't have enough staff, among other related issues needed to train the students. Minister Muyingo was presiding over the third graduation ceremony of School of Hygiene Bali, where 420 were awarded certificates and diplomas in environmental health science. One seek further studies after here. Don't be satisfied with what you are going to do. I know you are going to celebrate the whole day night. Be that fast, as the council member said, chairperson said. He appealed to the graduates. He appealed to the graduates to avoid the syndrome of getting rich quickly, but to emphasize hard work and avoid asking for money from clients before giving services to make a difference. People asking for money from clients before giving any service. Even when even when it comes to, to life, saving life, where you need to do things very fast, people are beginning to ask for money before they even touch you. When you go out, my dear graduates, you go to make a difference. That's my prayer. 
The Commissioner Bitvet in the Ministry of Education and Sports, Dr. Hajat Safina Mosene, commended Ministry of Education and Sports for supporting institutions across the country. And it is the only one in East Africa, and we, we are very much committed to ensure that it perform and deliver, especially to support the public services. So that Kai Fred Kasivante, UBC News. State Minister for Primary Education, Dr. Joyce Moriku Kaduchu, has reaffirmed government's commitment to enhance teachers' development. The minister's message was contained in a speech read on her behalf by the Kabali Resident District Commissioner, Godfrey Nyakahuma, at the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction and rehabilitation of Kabali and Mubende National Teachers' Colleges. Government of Uganda, with support from the Kingdom of Belgium, will construct and rehabilitate National Teachers College Kavali and Mobende to provide enhanced classrooms, laboratories and accommodation for both students and teachers in a speech read for her by the Resident District Commissioner Kavali Godfrey Nyakahuma. State Minister for Primary Education Dr. Joyce Moriku Kaduchu commended the Belgium government and the education development partner Enabel for the support intended to improve National Teachers College facilities. Days, two friends are hard to come by excellency, which is why we are extremely grateful for the continued support given to the government of Uganda, the Belgium, and other like-minded partners who wish us well as a country. The Commissioner, Teacher Education Training Program, Minister of Education, Kamwana Jonathan, said the 9.2 million euros venture under the Teacher Training Education Project is aimed at strengthening a healthy and safe gender-responsive learning environment that will ensure equitable and inclusive quality education. As Minister of Education, we shall look forward to further cooperation, especially in the sector of education, and for the two governments, that's the government of Uganda and the federal government, as you plan the next portfolio, we know that we will part time education for the government of this country. The Belgium ambassador in Uganda, Rudy V. Stratton, said supporting teachers to deliver high-quality learning is crucial in improving the education sector and fulfilling the Millennium Development Goals. In line with our previous infrastructure projects, we want to limit the impact on the environment. No trees will be cut to burn bricks for our projects. On the ground, we have planted the tree. So it's the opposite. All construction will be driven by the principles of climate response design. We now hope that we can set an example for other projects developed by the government of Uganda. The principal National Teachers College Kavali, Dr. Moses Wambi, said lack of staff accommodation and inadequate students' hostels remain a big challenge to the institution that calls for connected efforts among key education development partners. This will have been work in terms of workshops, seminars, conferences. This breaking phase is again going to change the face of this institution. We are indeed very grateful. The teacher training education project aims at improving quality of secondary teacher education by strengthening the professional competencies of teacher trainers in the five national teacher colleges of Mwende, Kaliro, Kavale, Unyama and Moni. Rukunjiri district leaders have attacked officials from the central government whom they accuse of procuring contractors on their behalf which has deterred government projects and subsequently affecting service delivery. The leaders claim that contractors procured from the center continue to underlook them and not adhere to their advice. There is a growing rift between local and central government with the former accusing the latter of procuring contractors on their behalf. The chief administrative officer of Rukunjiri district, Haji Masokoyo Waswa, said contractors procured by central government are a problem to district leaders. They feel we don't have authority over them. They want to do work without being supervised. 
and it becomes a problem. The Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Industry, with funding from the World Bank, pre-qualified five contractors to install micro-scale irrigation project in Rukunjiri district, but only two turned up, but three never showed up, claiming they were bankrupt. Some companies wanted advance before they do the work, and the, under this program, uh, the, the contractors are supposed to do the installations and we pay them after they have completed the installations. I blame the centre. Those guys at the centre, I don't know the reason why they want these contracts to be procured from the centre and yet the works are going to be done where? At the districts. And under the decentralisation policy, as local governments, we, there are certain things we are supposed to do. But our colleagues at the centre keep saying we don't have capacity. When shall we get the capacity? They should leave us to manage these things. If we make some mistakes, we learn from the mistakes and we, we perfect. The World Bank funded micro scale irrigation program being implemented by the Uganda Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfers Program is intended to provide interested farmers with constant water supply to increase production and productivity on their farms, especially during the dry spells. We are lucky to be among the first farmers to benefit from this program and it helped us a lot through the last dry season. We went through it and we managed to harvest the four acres. We got our maize and which maize we, are going to, we made silage. Kebisoni Seed School, which was under construction at a tune of 2.2 billion shillings, was later abandoned by the contractor on claims that the Uganda Revenue Authority failed to refund his VAT money. But as the contractual period elapsed, the district has to send this money back to the Treasury. Surprises again, they give us on one, only one year to spend money. And if the money is not spent in the year and it is returned, we are blamed. So this is one of the things that delay implementation of, of projects. And once projects delay, it affects service delivery. While district leaders have written numerous letters to the responsible ministries seeking for redress, they are yet to receive response. With their efforts hitting a dead end, their hope for immediate solution now remains with the president. Right now we wrote to the Minister of Education about these contractors of city schools. We wrote to the Solicitor General about terminating the contracts. In May, in April, May, up to now we have no responses. Immediately tomorrow I wrote a report to my minister. They have also cited corruption and connivance between officials from the centre and these contractors, which they have requested the anti-graft authorities to investigate. UBC News Tonight takes a very short break, but we return after these messages. <music> As you pay and pull and pull for this smartphone, make calls, update your WhatsApp status, watch YouTube, and Google anything under the sun with 2 GB worth of data every month for 7 months. Simply make a small deposit of 99k and pay the balance Mpola and Pola. You can pay in daily, weekly, or even monthly installments while you enjoy your new phone. So what are you doing today? Visit any MTN shop near you and get the MTN Kabode Super Easy Easy. Forget the oohs and the ohs. Forget every moment that stole the show. Because the real show is here on Go TV. It's the new season. It's action packed and it's going to be non stop football. With over 1,000 games from more than seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup, make sure you get the best seat in the house this new football season. Get a Go Coder with one month of Go TV value for only 25,000 Uganda shillings and enjoy non stop football. Go TV Uganda. Love it. Stay connected on the largest 4G network in Uganda using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi at only 75,000 Uganda shillings. It comes with 15 GBs free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 of your friends and family at a go. Visit the nearest Airtel shop to get one today or call 0800 330 for free delivery within Kampala. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GBs. Airtel, the smartphone network. Oh, uh, Susan, 
I want to propose to Rose. Eh? Yes, and this time I am serious. Have you guys had sex? Duh, of course. And have you had sex without using condoms? Hey, <laughs> you're curious. I'm more of concerned. Are you having sex with other people? Hey, hello. Uh, is this an interview or what? No, just things you should think about. Uh, do you know Rose's HIV status? Okay. Ah, uh, this is serious. Should I be worried? It is actually serious. Do you know your HIV status? Hmm. Uh, I think I am safe. <clears throat> Many times we get into situations that put us at risk of HIV. However, the first step to ending HIV is getting tested and knowing your results. It's time up HIV. Call 0800-211-046 or text 8080 toll free for more information about how to prevent HIV. This message is brought to you by Ministry of Health with support from USAID. Beat the back-to-school hustle today. Pay school fees conveniently using Airtel Money. Dial star 185 hush. Select option 6, school fees. Select to pay using bridge schools, school pay or peg pay. Select option 1, pay fees. Enter student number. Enter the amount. Enter the PIN number to complete payment. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Nivana wa fit when you eat it, Nivana wa fit when you eat it, Nivana wa fit when you eat it. Nirvana Packaged Drinking Water is a product of Crown Beverages Limited, makers of Pepsi products. That's life. That's Nirvana. Welcome back from that break. Now, still in more news, State Minister for Transport, Fred Vyamukama, has advised Ugandans to embrace rail and water transport in order not to feel the pinch of increased fuel prices. Vyamukama mainly, mainly targets industrialists that deal in bulk imports and exports. After more than 15 years in limbo, one of Uganda's most renowned water transport, the MV Pamba, resumed duty recently. Currently, it is moving on well. Uh, it is operating on the routes of uh, Kampala, that is uh, Port Bell, Kisumu, Kisumu is in Kenya. Uh, it goes to Mwanza as well. And uh, it is coming out of cargo. State Minister for Transport, Fred Biamokama, says this water vessel has vastly improved with many advantages. The demand is high. They used to have the demand, but Transportation was a problem through MV Pamba uh, in partnership with other ships like MV Kawa, MV Uhuru. So those challenges have been answered. Now here the production is high and even our Ugandans are getting jobs and the government gets revenue. MV Pamba, it can carry two routes a week and each route it carries about more than 1,000 tons. That is a route. And it is safe. And even it is cheap. Because you see, transporting via water, it is cheaper than road and air transport. 
And also, this one, it is saving our roads. Imagine if all these roofing materials, how, how heavy they are, if they could transport them to Malaba by road, how many trucks are those which could be on the road? These roads, that's why they get spoiled easily. Despite a few challenges like rain and docking issues, MV Pamba with its cost-friendly 22 wagons is preferred by large exporters. Regardless of the challenges mentioned before, this doesn't stop you from embracing MV Pamba as your number one choice of transport. We have a team in place to ensure that the challenges are maneuvered without affecting the scheduled time. This water carrier is managed by Mango Tree Group Limited that partner with Uganda Railway Corporation and has improved its routes across the region. Now, farmers in Kabamba and Kirianga sub-counties in Kagadi district have lauded the National Agriculture Research Organization for equipping them with knowledge and skills of preventing the spread of rampant African fall armyworms, which has devastated the crop plantations. We have more details in this report. Maize growers in Kagadi district have been trained on the use of pesticides, chemicals, identification and prevention of armyworm to boost maize production. A senior research technician at the National Agricultural Research Organization, Solomon Kaboyo, led a team of narrow officials to Kirianga and Kabamba sub-counties to train maize growers, agriculture officers and political leaders. So this training is timely and we encourage them to practice what we have trained them on. And that way, They'll secure high yields from their crops. At the end of the day, they'll generate enough income into their pocket. The trainees applauded the Minister of Agriculture for sensitizing them on how to prevent African armyworms. And actually, farmers have benefited a lot from this training. We've looked at so many things, most especially the chemicals. The way our farmers here are using chemicals, it is too much for them and that they are getting a lot of problems with chemicals. Has he instructed us how to use it, the pesticides, how to use the protective gears? In fact, we have been doing our own things, not knowing that we are even affecting our lives. African fall armyworm is a migratory American knock-toward moth that is highly invasive and destructive to grains and grasses as a lava. It first invaded Africa in 2016 and has since become established in many areas of the continent. <laughs> The production officer Mbara District has asked progressive livestock farmers in the area to support each other for better herds. Robert Tumwesi J was participating in a mixed in a livestock management training at JLV Mixed Farm Rutonto Rubaya in Kashari North Mbara district. Matu yone kuha amategari average kuonka eine fiziki yokora enyama. Speak as you work is the adage Mbarara district leaders have adopted for improving of their community's livelihoods. The production officer Mbarara district, Robert Tumwesige, was on a working visit to JLV Mixed Farm Mutonto Ruwaya in Kashari North Mbarara district, which he said can qualify as a demonstration farm. So that we can learn various things concerning farming, modern farming. Indeed, we toured the press, we toured various enterprises, what I can say, this is a demo farm with a lot of things to learn. Tumwesige was speaking to local council leaders attending a training courtesy of a district councillor representing Rubaya sub-county, Lloyd Trinom Juni Muhimbura. They can come here and learn how I, I, I can tell them how I started small and now I'm producing plenty of milk products. 
I produce um, yogurt, I produce ghee. So you see, when you produce that, when you do that value addition, you can get some improves, improved prices. Noida Trinom Juni Muhimbura urged fellow leaders to introduce life-changing projects for the well-being of communities. So uh, I would like to tell the farmers that they shouldn't worry, they shouldn't fear starting. You can start with the little resources and also the materials which are available. A facilitator during the training, who is also the resident district commissioner Gomba, Stephen Asimwe, appealed to all Ugandans to appreciate mindset change for better That's livelihood. Right. So the all this was to give them uh, like a mindset change and hope so that if they reach their areas they are able to form groups improve and then be able to send their children to school A number of communities on the African continent have continued to face chronic hunger as a result of recurring drought, conflict and instabilities causing severe food shortage. The visiting Sasakawa Africa Association board member to Ugandan farmers, Professor Keiichi Shirato, says the food shortage threats are again fueled by the increasing population and declining arable land, making it very difficult to produce enough food. The partnership between Government of Uganda and Sasakawa Africa Association has greatly enhanced the biggest part of smallholder farmers in subsistence economy to increase production and a boost in household incomes. The visiting Sasakawa Africa Association board member Professor Kichi Shirato warns the public against population pressure, saying this coupled with drought is threatening food supply on the African continent. Today, can you imagine? How many people are living in this continent, in Africa? And how many people are living in the world? Eight billion people are living in all over the world. But in 25, 25 years from now, yeah, quarter of the population will be Africa. And Africa will be the most richest continent in the world in your generation, in the futures. But the important thing is, once you grow your populations, you need more food. Mm. Professor Keiichi Shirato, flanked by Sasakawa Africa Association Administration Officer Shiho Ichikawa, said they are pleased that Ugandan farmers are taking a lead in adopting the agriculture technologies along the agriculture value chain. It's totally different seeing it and feeling it. So I believe you have much. Um, uh, so motivation and you have um, much opportunities to expand. The Assistant Commissioner, Agriculture Extension and Skills Management at the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Jennifer Oyuru, said that the partnership between her ministry and Sasakawa have greatly enhanced food security and incomes to the rural farmers. But for this team, for this uh, team, that we do what we want them to do. Because it's one of our strategies to coordinate, to collaborate, and to network so that we better the life of our family community. As a government, we cannot do everything. Like, we will improve on their skills in doing things differently. I think that is what we want to see. And which now we are seeing through this partnership with Sasakawa. The country director, Sasakawa Africa Association Uganda, Dr. Rosalind Yamtale, says that technologies like the farmer learning platforms, which are technology demonstration sites, have enabled farmers adopt improved technologies of food security. So we do the farmer learning platform where we demonstrate the best practices in production of a given enterprise that they have selected. It can be maize, it can be soybean, it can be beans, same, same, name it. And we demonstrate how you, from site selection, land preparation, to planting, all that good agronomic practices. With now a new Sasakawa strategic plan in place and social focus on sustainable regenerative agriculture, nutrition sensitive agriculture, and market oriented agriculture, no doubt that emerging issues in food security and household incomes will be addressed. So that Kaye, Douglas Setumba, UBC News. 
The Minister for Gender, Labour and Social Development, Betty Amongi, recently disclosed that 450 Ugandans currently stranded in Dubai and other cities in the UAE will be repatriated. These Ugandans will also enjoy a waiver on all penalties occurring from their overstretched visas. In 2005, government initiated the externalization of labor program as a short-term window for creating safe, orderly, regular and formal channel for Ugandans who choose employment abroad. Companies were given terms and conditions, but there are still some people who have made it a habit to traffic human beings. This has now led people in this business to ask Ugandans to stop being misled by bloggers who pretend to have agents in the United Arab Emirates but using licensed companies to avoid such problems. The managing director of Free Zone Recruitment Agency, Zana, says some dubious persons are behind the issue of Ugandans getting stranded in the Middle East countries. Human trafficking is uh, done by those people who are selfish. Actually, they only uh, they don't want to pass through uh, these right channels or formal channels where one should pass through to get employment. Normally, those fake fake uh, uh, people who take uh, workers uh, abroad, they are there, and uh, I encourage the people who want employment to go for companies which are registered. Tubarangira is grateful to government considering the efforts put in to rescue stranded Ugandans. In fact, we are so grateful for the efforts that the, the government has put. Though the, the government is taking its initiative as its responsibility, but I hope even these workers, uh, these problems they are facing, they brought them to themselves. Otherwise, for us, we are grateful and we, we, we say kudos to the government and it's better keep it up. He wants whoever intends to travel abroad to always go through right channels. Uh, I encourage the people who want employment to go for companies which are registered. Who are registered with the government because whatever they are doing, government is aware. So taking people from entering the, the premises of the companies. But for us, we decided that we will employ the security now, so which we think that will cover the, 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 the problem. Because if you do not put their security, it means people will be misled always. They will be misled. with electricity is now so affordable with the Fumba tariff set by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. With the Fumba tariff, you can now buy up to 70 units of your car at a reduced price of 412 Uganda shillings by unit after consuming your first 80 units of the month. For more information, contact the Electricity Regulatory Authority on 0200-506-000. Oh, they look nice. Thank you, honey. Yo! Come You guys gather is going down. Gather! Gather! Yo! Airtel is giving you bigger data bundles for the same price. Dell Star 175 hash to choose from a range of bigger Gillux bundles that don't expire. Bigger monthly bundles, all for the same price. And stay connected longer to your loved ones. Airtel, the smartphone network. Happiness comes to us in many places. It's in knowing the mosquito net keeps our children healthy. The wife having the support of her husband. It's 
in deciding together when to have a baby. And for some, focusing on what's important right now. So what's your happiness? Make the right health decisions to ensure happiness for you and your family. Welcome back. And now into the business scene. Government is constructing a multi-billion structure at Uganda Technical College Elgin Center of Excellence. The Minister of, of State for Higher Education, Dr. John Crisosto Muhingo, this weekend toured the Mbale-based project. State Minister for Higher Education, Dr. John Crisosto Muhingo, has toured a multi-billion Uganda Technical College Elgon in Bualasi in Bale district being constructed by Excel contractors and commended them for the good work so far. The minister was accompanied by the Ministry of Education officials, political leaders in the area, among others. They will take up all those jobs. So, Agnes here has been appealing to you to send the children to study these programs. Me, I'm, not, I'm only saying that whoever wants money <laughs> should come <laughs> under these facilities and they get skilled. That's the idea behind the Skilling Uganda program. Muhingo encouraged those criticizing the NRM government to join these centers of excellency technical colleges to be trained vocational skills. What has government done? People go to Elgon and they see what we have done. Go to Bukalasa and they see what we are doing. A lot of money government is putting in this infrastructure. Ugandans, taxpayers, this is the time for you to go and see what the NRM government has done by visiting these institutions. The project coordinator Uganda Skills Project, Agnes Arachi, said the Skilling Uganda program introduced over 15 years ago is very vital, especially for the economic and social development of the youth. It's being networked with three other vocational training institutes and the vocational training institutes will train at a lower level and uh, the college will train at a higher level. So that Kaye, Fred Casivante, UBC News. The Korean Federation on Community Cooperatives, a non-government organization, has embarked on equipping local communities with digital financial literacy. The country coordinator, Samuel Gumko Andrew Chepa, says this digital financial literacy technology will enhance safety of savings. <laughs> Digital financial literacy technology has been championed in two districts of Mpiji and Mitiana, where over 200 residents have been equipped with digital skills in saving. This system is going to help, is going to help us, we as members, to access our accounts or our money anywhere. So you, you go to your phone and dial star 284, star, it is 284, star, 4 hash, then you follow the procedures. The coordinator, Samal Gumogo in Uganda, Andrew Chepa, says this new technology is intended to improve safety of savings and reduce bookkeeping. It's to increase the safety and the soundness of this institution. We are all aware that one of the biggest challenges of community-based financial institutions has been safety. Leaders have misappropriated, misappropriated people's money. So this system is coming in to strengthen the controls, to ensure that the operations are effective and efficient, and to close any door that bad leadership would have utilized to misappropriate members' money. Residents of Tidibogo village applauded the Korean government for the new innovations in their area. <laughs> Tumi 
era ne checking anga bikola bulunji nyo ne chidala bobo teka yo sente te bakusala che che singa kale otu che chisinzo okutunyumira Mary Namkose for your business news UBC News Tonight has come to an end, but of course, do enjoy much more of UBC's programming after this newscast. I'm Lorraine Masika Kazimoto and Muhammad Mugalun Sign Language Interpretation. Have a good night. UBC. <laughs>